This season, Instacart has your back to school. As in, they've got your back to school lunch favorites like snack packs and fresh fruit. And they've got your back to school supplies like backpacks, binders, and pencils. And they've got your back when your kid casually tells you they have a huge school project due tomorrow. <laughs> Let's face it, we were all that kid. So first, call your parents to say, I'm sorry. And then download the Instacart app to get delivery in as fast as 30 minutes all school year long. Get a $0 delivery fee for your first three orders while supplies last. Minimum $10 per order. Additional terms apply. Are you ready? Let's go! Showtime. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? Ready. ready? This is the Bob and Jeff Show, starring Bob Lutz. This is a sacred moment between a boy and his father. Say what you're trying to say. What kind of weirdo are you? Jeff Lutz. And it's frustrating when you don't hear me, because I'm speaking very clearly with direct language. I can feel the love. 97.5 and 1240 KFH. It's all happening. It's all happening. It's all happening. And you're invited to partake of it. Stand by for action. Hello again, everybody. Welcome to Tuesday edition, the Bob and Jeff Show, KFH Radio. It's Bob Lutz, Jeff Lutz co-hosting. Max Power is our producer and engineer, 869-1240. That is our hot IHOP hotline. We uh, invite you to call. Just not so much during the first segment. That's when Jeff and I air it out. And uh, let each other know... Uh, Who's really the boss here? Let each other know that? Yeah, I'll let you know. You you try to let me know. Not really. Uh, the audience understands uh, that that it's me. And, Why uh, are you worried about that? You bring that up move on. nearly every day. Is there there's something going on in your personal life that's making you feel uh, you know. insignificant? or Maybe. Maybe not. All right. What would you think of the home run derby? I actually ended up watching it Didn't. because my wife loves it and... Uh, So I ended up watching it, and I kind of enjoyed it. It's too long, so I didn't watch it wall-to-wall. But I watched uh, the final couple of pairings, and then the the, uh, I took a look at Jose Ramirez hitting 21 bombs and then bowing out. But, uh, yeah, I was not really locked in. I was locked in on on Monday Night Raw yet again. Well, Bobby Wood uh, Wood Jr. was fantastic last night. He really elevated his brand, I thought. Brand, uh, yeah, he's got a brand. He's a superstar. Uh, uh, no more brand up. You've never had one with no the more Guardians. brand talk. You've never had one with the Guardians. So you, what does you that might, mean? Well, you've never had a superstar. Never. No. That's interesting. Who was your last superstar? Francisco Lindor, probably. Jose Ramirez. Was he a superstar. Yeah. Huh. He sure was. That is, that. I I don't I don't agree. Why? He's probably going to be a Hall of Famer. Francisco Lindor. Yeah, very likely a Hall of Famer. I, I don't know that you're uh, on the right track with that. I do. I don't know uh, where he'd be coming up short for you. He hits 30 homers a year. He steals bases. He plays great defense. He's played on teams that have won more than they've lost. He's now in his 10th season, still only 30. Uh, he has 1,420 career hits. Uh Career OPS is good, 812. Career OPS Plus is good, 118. Uh, stolen bases, he's had a, a good run there, 174. Uh, he had 31 home runs in 2023. Yeah, he's, he's probably in that realm. I don't think he's there yet. But he on this on the path that he's currently on, he'll be. Uh, he's never finished higher than fifth in an MVP voting. Uh, those are things voters look at. So the fifth best player in the league to you is not a superstar. Mm. Interesting. So there's no more than four superstars in baseball. No, I'm I'm saying that uh, I don't regard Francisco Lindor as a superstar. I and I uh, regard him as a star. Well, he sure was when he was with Cleveland. You know who's a superstar? Uh, Albert Pujols. Mm, that's a superstar. Okay. So again, it sounds like the there's Cardinals two or three superstars at a time in baseball. That's basically what you're saying. Superstars tough. Uh, was 
was Adam Wainwright a superstar? No. Was Yadier Molina a superstar? He's a high level star, potential Hall of Famer. I could I could see him working his way into superstar. If you're a Hall of Famer, you were probably a superstar at one point in, in your career. Was Bill Mazeroski ever a superstar? I don't know. I wasn't alive when he played. Well, you just made a statement. And uh, what right. I'm going to do when you make a statement is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pour water on it right out of the chute. By choosing one example out of hundreds? Bill Mazeroski had 2,016 career hits, batted 260, a lifetime OPS of 667, and a lifetime OPS plus of 84 which means he was 16% below average. Okay. How do you get into how do you get into the Hall of Fame? He had a big home run, that's how. And his defense was pretty renowned. Oh, please. He could move one step to his right and one to his left. How did Listen, I got nothing against How Bill did Ozzie Smith get into the Hall of Fame with an 87 OPS plus 13? He's the greatest defensive player of, okay, so of, you, of all time. So you're so you're saying and now you, not in that so category. So you're saying now you can get into the Hall of Fame based on Mazeroski's not in that category. Nobody ever thought that Bill Mazeroski. So only one player in the history of the game can get in the Hall of Fame based on their defense. Well, Ozzie Smith also became a very good offensive player. But he, he wouldn't be in the Hall of Fame with his offensive no, numbers. No, it's because he was the greatest defensive player. Okay, so answer the question. In the history of the You're, game, you keep, you, playing the, the position that requires well, you the don't, most defense. You don't, you, you're not answering any questions. I, asked I haven't you, heard a question. I asked you. Here's it, what I'll uh, point out see, to you. See, this is what you do. You well, make I've already these, won this argument. You make these st- you're, you're not even... You're not even addressing the argument. No, I've already had it. I've already won it. No, you haven't. I've already so put it in the win column. You haven't answered the questions. I've already uh, I've already started celebrating. Well, you're the worst arguer in the history of the world. Oh, Jeffrey. Why do you think you can just trample people? I don't trample yeah, anyone. Yeah, you do. I, that, I, I know how you are. I don't want to argue about Bill Mazeroski. We're not I arguing about Bill Mazeroski. I'm already bored. That's I asked why. you a question. What was the question? Can you, is Ozzie Smith the only player who can be in the Hall of Fame based on his he's defense? He's one of the few that is. I'm asking you. No, Should, but he's one of the okay, very few Okay, well, the other question is. I asked you was, there, are there only three or four superstars at any given time in baseball? Currently in Major League Baseball, superstar is a high bar for me. That's why I asked the question. Uh, so I'll tell you who's superstars currently, if that's what you're interested in knowing. I mean, if you want me to get d- deep into well, the weeds have, on this. I think you have a really bad definition of what you think a superstar is. No, I don't have a bad definition of what I think a superstar is. I have a good definition of it. No, you don't. Here are the current hitting superstars. Pitching, it's hard. Why? If you have to look it up, are they superstars? I want to look at it. I want to make sure I'm not missing anybody. Uh, I would say Shohei Otani is a superstar. Aaron Judge is a superstar. Uh, Bryce Harper is a superstar. Mookie Betts is a superstar. Uh, Juan Soto is a superstar. Uh, beyond them, it gets a little dicey. Jose Altuve, probably a superstar. Still? Sure. Hmm. But beyond beyond those guys, it get Jose Altuve is still hitting uh, 306. Uh, it gets tougher. Those are the people I regard as being superstars, right? I guess. That makes sense. Pitching-wise, the current superstars are few and far between. Um, Garrett Cole is about the only one that I would classify that. Maybe Corbin Burns and certainly Paul Skeens. Well, he's a he's ten starts in. Go, give he's me a, a break. superstar. No, he's not. Yes, he is. No, you got to stab. You don't just get superstardom. Is he starting the All Star start. game after ten? Yeah, starts? Well, let's see what he does next year. Please. So yeah, my superstar list would be pretty short. Let's see what a guy throwing time. 104 does next year. He'll be throwing 104 next year. No, there's guys like look at Steven Strasburg. So he got hurt. Did so, he have a? I, I, well, I got to wait and see if a guy has longevity before I'm going to 
point him to be a superstar. So, I thought it was what he does. No, it's it's a, a combination of things. Oh, interesting. Francisco Lindor probably was a superstar five years ago. He's fallen off. Not really. Sure he has. Look at his numbers. His numbers are the same as they've ever been. No, they're not. You you couldn't be more wrong. I mean, if you want me to if you want to debate these things, you better come with Many, many facts. His OPS by year, 121, 106, 116, 132, 118, 104, 100, 125, 122, 124. Yeah, that's fallen off. He's been the – no, it's not. Batting average. Batting uh, average. Pretty, uh, you know, fell to 230 in 2021. That's three years ago. 270, I mean. 254, and 253. He's not the uh, hitter he used to be with the uh, Guardians. Nobody is. So You've seen hitting go down. Uh, it's you relative better, to you your environment. You better answer the bell for me. If you, if you want, uh, he was above 800 in OPS in four of his first five years. Since then, he's been above 800 OPS, barely. In one of his mo yeah, most everybody's OPS years. has gone down because the offensive environment has gone down. Not necessarily. It's, it's so I don't there know you how, go. I don't know how these are things you did you uh, to not did you understand. watch the anthem singer last night? I time. saw it. Do you know this person? I Ingrid may have heard Andrus? of her. I'm not sure. You're not sure? I don't know. She might be on my playlist. Uh, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Well, it was like okay. Uh, either this person is toying with us or she's hammered. And it turned out she was hammered. Apparently so. Why would you do that if you've been drinking all day? Well, what's the, what's the alternative? Not to drink all day. If you're going to sing the national anthem. You said why would you do that? At the home run derby in front of. Millions of viewers, a packed house, the greatest players in the game, and you go get hammered before you do it. You're you, well. She's checking into rehab, so she obviously has a problem. Uh, just astounding to me. I couldn't believe it. It was awful. Yeah, she didn't sound good. Well, didn't sound. I'm not gonna, good. I'm not going to be somebody who's going to pile on. What do you mean, uh, pile someone? On? Someone who the next day. Uh, comes out and says, you know, I apologize. I'm I'm trying to do something about this. I mean, I don't I'm it's not gonna be I don't know. It was bad, but seems like she's trying to better her well, life. Uh, listen, I'll I'll give her the benefit of the doubt when I'm assured that she deserves it. Uh her comment to announce that she was going to rehab was a little flippant at the end. Rehabs, I hear, is a lot of fun. Give me a break. So you isn't anything to joke about. Uh, it's not? No. Everyone on the planet was joking about it last she night. She shouldn't joke about Why? it. Cause. Why? Because. Why? Because she looked bad. So? It was a bad look. So You just take the opposite. So you're not allowed you're to. You're the only person I've seen in any form of commentary, social media response who is coming to her side. Yeah, because you know how hard it is to admit something like that the day after? You have to admit No, you don't. Like that. I'm going to rehab. That's something that she, I mean, that's extremely difficult. You have to admit if, if you, you have to admit you were drunk. No, you it, don't. And if you were drunk doing that, you better get to rehab because that's not a time to be drunk. I guess. That's indicative of a drinking problem, right? Right, which she admitted, which few do. Okay, go get your go get your help, but don't expect me to sit here today saying, well, that poor girl, give me a break. No compassion. She's not drunk when she goes in the studio and records her album. How do you know? What What is it with you? What are you talking about? Why are you like this? How do you know that? Why are you the one voice of... I'm not. Look on Twitter. There's plenty of people that that are saying, "Man, I was wrong about her." I, I take back the joke. That's nothing to be wrong about. There's nothing to be wrong about. I commend her if she's going to go get help. Seriously, if she's if that's her, what she's doing, it's very easy to get on social media and say the right thing. Very easy. Very everybody can do it. 
That's the beauty of social mm. media. Man, I'm going to get up here and I'm going to make people. No, go do it. That's she what just said now. she was going to do it. Everybody can say I mean, I they're going to do it. Ultimately, I could. Everybody can say they're going to do anything. Ultimately, I guess I would say that I do not care about a national anthem performance at a home run derby or really anywhere, to be honest. Well, I don't either. What, what do you mean, care about it? So anybody can just go out there and, and uh, make a mockery of it? I, think, I don't think I think it needs to be sung well. It's our national anthem. Right. If you're if you're entrusted to sing it, but it doesn't really need should, to be sung you should, anywhere. You should. So that's not the debate. If you're going to sing the Star Spangled Banner in front of a crowd at a national sporting event like the Home Run Derby, you owe it to Major League Baseball, the fans in attendance, the players, and the country. Just do your very best. If her very best is not very good, okay. But if you're going to go get drunk and sing the national anthem, uh, shame on you. Okay, shame on her then. I mean, I don't know why that's up for debate. I don't know. I just don't feel like shaming her for that. That doesn't that doesn't do anything for me. Sh- I, don't, I don't care shaming, if it does anything Shaming for somebody you. over a na- national anthem performance, that doesn't make me feel better. What's, what's the point? I'm not looking to feel better. Then what am I looking to do? I'm just saying do? that we deserve better than that. That was... We don't need that. We don't need that kind of stress in our lives. We've got enough. I, I the was The national not anthem needs to be sung to the best of your ability. It's our national song. It's our national anthem. Uh, it means something to a lot of people. And you can have the debate about, well, we don't need the national anthem before sporting events. Okay, whatever. But you'll, that'll always, that'll never happen. That's never going away. There's a lot of things to debate. Uh, that have true merit in the argument. That's not one of them. Well, I, I mean, again, I just don't. There's nothing that comes of, hey, shame on you. I don't know her. She doesn't know me. She doesn't care about my feelings. Before yesterday, I didn't care about uh, anything that she ever did. Good. So. Then good for you. What do you mean, uh, good for I me? I don't have your level of detachment. I think uh, it was uh, it was so it the was attachment you have is wanting to shame another person. No, I'm not shaming her. You I'm said saying shame on you. Don't get drunk before you sing. So the what does shame line. on you mean if not shame? All right, time for a break. When we come back, we're going to catch up uh, with Colin Mockery from Whose Line Is It Anyway? He is a national improvisational comedian. He's coming to the Orpheum Theater with Brad Sherwood on August the 18th. That's a Sunday evening, and that show is going to do very well. Uh, We're happy to be joined shortly by Colin Mockery. Stay with us. Temp check. What kind of summer are we having this year? A family road trip summer, a beach bum summer, or a wake me when the sun sets summer? With Instacart, choose your own adventure and skip the shopping side quests. Where available, you can get ice cream delivered to your hotel, sunscreen to the pool, or cold brew to your bed. Well, door. In as fast as 30 minutes. Wherever you find yourself this summer, you can get the goods. Download Instacart for free delivery on your first three orders. Offer valid for a limited time. Minimum $10 per order. Excludes restaurants. Additional terms and fees apply. KFH. Here's uh, Colin Mockery, who joins us, longtime comedian and improvisationalist. He'll be in Wichita again on uh, August the 18th. Colin, it's our pleasure. Hello. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me. You bet. So we were just talking about the art of improvisational comedy. Neither of us really uh, have any clue how you're able to do this, as well as you've done it for many years, along with your partner now, Brad Sherwood, and uh, your show, whose line is it anyway? Uh, how did that become a part of your fabric, your personal fabric of comedy? Oh, good question. I, um, I mean, I was all, I was a very quiet um, um, young man uh, growing up, but I always had, I always loved comedy. From you know, the old Silent Guys to uh, the Golden Age of Television. Anyone that made me laugh. 
And so uh, when I went into theater school, I saw this demonstration of this thing called improv. And I thought, oh, that looks like it'd be fun. So it'd be some, it was just something for me. Um, there was a theater uh, in Vancouver where they would have improv matches every weekend. So it just became a thing where I thought, well, this is going to be just a fun thing to do. Never thinking, oh, this is going to be my career. So, yeah, I was going to ask you about your childhood. You know, you, you were born in Scotland, but you grew up mostly in Canada, kind of moved around Canada a little bit. Was there a need for a sense of belonging? Is that kind of maybe why you got into acting and, and theater? Or or was it like you said, you just always loved comedy and maybe you would have been on that path anyway? My plan was to become a marine biologist. So I was in sciences up until, I think, the second to last year of high school. And because I was so shy, a friend of mine dared me to try out for the school play, which I got. And then I got my first laugh. And that was pretty much the end of all sciences. I thought, nope, this <laughs> is what I want now forever. So immediately switched to drama and then did the slow, slow build to lower stardom. Talking uh, with Colin Mockery, he will be in Wichita at the Orpheum Theater with Brad Sherwood on August the 18th. So you mentioned, Colin, that you were a quiet kid, and but you like comedy. So uh, only you know what was working inside of your mind during all those quiet moments. Uh, were you funny to yourself? Did you know that you, know, you had a, uh, a funny brain, so to speak? Oh, um, um, you're making me think too much. I, I think so. <laughs> I thought, um, I mean, I was, I was funny with my, my small group of friends, but I, I didn't, never had any thought of having that uh, translate to a bigger audience. And it was really, um, I think, through hit and miss, just learning what made me laugh and what I thought was funny, and then sort of working it towards a, a larger audience. I've always been very lucky in that I've worked with great people. So, you know, I would pick their brains. Also, everyone I ever laughed at on television, I would watch them, try to figure out what it was about them that made me laugh and what I could use or steal and put it through my own viewpoint. So what what has been, from your perspective, kind of the evolution of the the art of improv uh, I know it was really put on the map with Whose Line Is It Anyway and you and Wayne and Ryan and, and Drew and the other people who participated in that show. So what what did you feel like kind of was your role in the evolution of it and what fr on the from kind of the outside looking in maybe has, has the evolution been for you? I think the um, part of being the show it just gave uh, improv an identity. Whenever anyone would talk about improv, they would go, you know, like that show, Whose Line Is It Anyway? And because of that, it sort of got improv into the public consciousness. And it had been around for a while, um, but it was mostly used in acting schools as sort of a, a tool to delve into your character. You would do little improvs to um, a day in your life for your character or something like that. Or Second City always used it to come up with scenes for their uh, sketch show. Uh, Whose Line was sort of the first show where it was just pure improv for entertainment's sake. And then it sort of um, it sort of burst from there. Colleges and high schools started improv clubs. I mean, it's a very, in one way, it's a very uh, cheap um, hobby. All you need is an audience and people to work with, and you can pretty much do it anywhere. And since that time, it's just evolved into, you know, um, there's Dungeons and Dragons improvs where you go on a quest through this incredible journey. There's people are finding different ways to use improv in an entertaining way. Talking with uh, Colin Mockery at the Orpheum Theater, he will be with Brad Sherwood on the 18th of August. Um, so I'm going to throw this out at you and see if it uh, takes. I also grew up in your era. I'm a couple years older than you are. I uh, watched a lot of TV comedians. I especially uh, was tuned in to Johnny Carson and his show. And, and my favorite comedian uh, of all time is Don Rickles, who I regarded as somewhat of an improv comedian, especially on that show. Uh, does, does he fit? Did, did, you, uh, uh, did you study him at all? Is, is that one of your guys? 
Um, I, yes, oh, absolutely. Don Rickles was someone that we all, and of course, nowadays it'd be, I think, very hard for him to um, get a career going. But at that point, I, I don't think he had an act. He just went out and riffed off the audience to a, a great success. He also had, somehow he was able to insult an entire audience without them feeling bad about it, which is a really rare skill. So I would watch him just to, because um, I never felt easy um, when I was in Second City talking to audiences. There would be times where, you know, you'd have to stall while people were getting ready for a scene. So I would watch him and try to figure out how it was, how he could be so relaxed in front of an audience with seemingly nothing. And uh, it, that really helped me studying him. What has it uh, been like for you as an entertainer to be synonymous with another entertainer? And I, I think that would be Ryan Stiles. You kind of grew up in the industry together, obviously, on Whose Line. You partnered in so many hilarious sketches and and acts and things like that. So, you know, what has that uh, been like for you to have that personal and professional relationship with him? Um, I'm just happy I managed to get him a career because the poor guy was floundering. <laughs> he had nothing. He didn't know what to do. Um, I mean, I was very fortunate. Um, we were very fortunate we came together early in our careers. I mean, we basically grew up together. He started off doing stand-up. I was with uh, an improv troupe when we kind of met. And it was just one of those uh, magical um, moments. It was just we immediately hit it off. We immediately hit it off on stage and off stage. And what I loved about Ryan was he got as much pleasure setting you up for a joke and you doing the joke as you did getting the joke himself, which is very rare uh, for comedians. So, again, I learned a lot from him on how to be um, – selfless on stage and how to work with a group and how to set up other people. It's, we're all part of the same thing. And it's just as important to set up a joke as it is to take the punchline. Well, I think a part of it too, is that uh, I don't take this the wrong way because it's certainly not meant to be that, but you both kind of look like comedians. So I kind of start laughing the minute, the minute I look at you, I think you're funny. Uh, is that an insult by the way? Did I just, uh, that's <laughs> no, certainly not think, meant I to mean, be one. Ryan looks like um, Don Martin, who used to write for Mad Magazine. He looks like one of his creations, you know, the tall kind of gawky guy. And I guess I also have a, a kind of a comedic face. So we kind of, that also sort of helped. And, you know, we were big fans of people like, you know, Harvey Corman and Tim Conway and all the greats throughout the years. So I'm absolutely fine with that. It gave us both a career. We're, we're happy. Uh, Jeff asked you about Ryan Stiles, of course. I want to ask you about Brad Sherwood because you've been uh, touring with him for a long time. Uh, just the chemistry that has has to be there uh, when you do what you two guys are doing and, and you've been on the road together. And Just talk about that kinship and chemistry and how it comes about, and, and is, is it easy to preserve that? Yeah, I, um, I think – I mean, we were friends before we started working together, uh, so that helps. Also, we're different uh, touring people. He is obsessed with details. He is, you know, things I would never think about. That's the he he focuses on that and takes care of it to make our tour better. Where I I truly don't care. I'm basically there to make sure he doesn't have a stroke. That's my contribution <laughs> to our tour. And you know, I think. We've been touring for 22 years. We've never had a disagreement. We both have the same, I think, sort of um, philosophy about improv. We're constantly trying, coming up with new ways of getting us outside of our comfort zone because we find that's when the most fun for us and the most fun for the audience is when we put ourselves in almost impossible situations. So it really helps when you both have the same sort of um, view as to where you want the show to do. I, uh, you know, watched Whose Line Is It Anyway with Drew, and then during the pandemic and after, rediscovered the show with uh, Aisha Tyler, still hilarious, had a lot of huge laughs with my family. I think you maybe get your biggest laughs when you name the television shows or documentaries or whatever that interrupt the, or that are, you know what I'm talking about with the with the yeah. music Wait, before Wayne. Mm -hmm. How do you come up with the, the names of those programs? 
some, I just have a lot, a big backlog. I think from my years at Second City, we would often do parodies of shows. And there's things in there that just um, that take me by surprise when they come out of my mouth. It's like, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> sometimes I can plan them. Sometimes I go, oh, uh, yeah, I should come up with something here. So I'm constantly uh, going through the Rolodex of what the, what's the popular show right now that I can make fun of or the popular movie that I can uh, make a pun out of their name. So um, it, it's part of the only homework you do as an improviser is just keeping up with what's going on in the world. So you you can uh, you be able to deal with anything that the audience gives you. Colin Mockery, our final moments here. He will be at the Orpheum with his improv partner Brad Sherwood coming up on Sunday, August the eighteenth. I I, I want to ask you about uh, the Drew Carey show. You were a guest on that show a handful of times. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I still kind of associate this whole group together. Uh, Talk about the appeal of that show, because here we are so many years later, and I think anybody who watched that show loved it, looks back longingly. Why did that show work as well as it did? Uh, it was a lot of luck, I think. When I think of Who's Line and how they could have pitched it, it makes no sense that it actually made it on air. We were really lucky that Drew was involved, because at that point, Drew was the um he was abc so he was a big fan of the british version and when they wanted to do an american version of it um and to a you know a television executive if you walk into the office go i have a show there's four people who you don't know they don't have a show until people yell things at them and then they make stuff up i can't understand why they went yeah okay we'll do that but um the belief in Drew really helped that show happen. And I think it was a really strong group of improvisers and everybody had a distinct personality. And I, we all have um, from that show, our fan clubs, people who are rabid about what we do and follow us in every avenue of uh, show business. So we really lucked out with the cast. Um, it was at a point where there was nothing like it on television. Um, a lot of sitcoms I felt were getting starting to get stale where you could sort of, you go along with them, and you could almost come up with the punchline before the characters on the show did. And whose line was fresh and that you never knew where a punchline was coming. Nobody knew where a setup was. It was just weird and wacky. Well, Colin, we really appreciate it. I guess I should ask you, since we kind of base our show on sports, uh, ah. being a Toronto person, are you in, are you into the Blue Jays, Raptors, Argonauts, Maple Leaves, any of that? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm a hockey guy, so, you know, I have years of misery with the uh, Maple Leafs. Um, <laughs> it's all part of our thing. <laughs> Maybe right. next year. Uh, and the, the Blue Jays go. are kind of tanking this year. The Raptors had a bad year. We're, we're due something to break. Um, I don't know what yeah. it, our, our women's hockey team did very well until the playoffs. Then they followed what the guys did. But... Um, I think there's a foundation there, hopefully. One day in my lifetime, I'd like to see us win something. <laughs> well, sorry to, you. sorry to bring you down with that last question, but we certainly appreciate your time. We look forward to your appearance here at the Orpheum Theater uh, with your buddy Brad Sherwood on the 18th of August. Colin, thanks so much. It's been a pleasure for us. Oh, thank you so much for having me on. Here's Caden Favors out of Carl Albert High School, Midwest City, Oklahoma. I'm good. How are you? We're uh, we're good. We're not as good as you are. Neither of us was ever drafted in the sixth <laughs> round of the Major League Baseball draft. Uh, certainly, that had to be a tremendous high point for you. Tell us where you were and what you were doing when you heard about this. Yeah, um, I was out in Norman at my sister's house, and we had a bunch of family there, and my girlfriend was there, and we, uh, you know, just waited for a phone call and thankfully it wasn't you know late in the day it was early in the day so we got a full day of celebrating in and um yeah i mean it it's everything you dream about when did when did it start to kind of feel realistic for you not just leading up to the draft but in your life when 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 uh professional baseball seemed like an attainable goal because you know you weren't terribly highly recruited obviously i think you were a walk-on 
Um, so, you know, you obviously improved your stock tremendously over the last few years. When did professional baseball start to feel realistic for you? Yeah, I mean, you know, every kid dreams about it. Um, I got lucky enough to go play junior college baseball. Uh, and as soon as I stepped on campus at my junior college, you know, my skills started to tick up a little bit. And then I started to get some scout interest. And, you know, it was still – it's still a far dream and I, you know, I had a rough freshman year and then I just wanted to get out of there and prove to myself that I could play division one baseball. And thankfully I was still talking to uh, coach Pelfrey at the time. And he, uh, he said, you know, we got a walk on spot for you. And I was like, that's all I need is an opportunity. And so I walked on there and uh, you know, the spring rolled around and I proved myself. And um, then I really started to get interest and uh, you know, just, it kind of continued to build from there. So if I, I if I had to say there was a, you know, a point of realizing that oh man I can go play pro, had to have been that um, you know sophomore spring. Uh, like I was I was dominant and I was like oh man like, there you know it's only up from here. Talking uh, with Caden Favors out of Carl Albert High School, Midwest City, Oklahoma, the ace of the Shockers staff. This past season, nine and four with a three point two one earned raver, earned run average and pitched a bunch of innings, uh, one hundred and six point two uh, innings. So, when did you start to realize, Caden, that you were coming into your own as a pitcher? That things were starting to click. That all the coaching and conditioning and and all that stuff. You're six three two oh five, so you have good size. That it was coming together for you. Yeah, I mean, uh, this year I felt the most comfortable in my, um, you know, body and mechanics. And I, I learned that, you know, uh, my stuff is better than what I've been, you know, not told it was, but uh, I haven't used it in the right way. And Coach Claggett helped me figure that out. And, uh, you know, I, I talked to Pelfrey still some too. So he, he helps me on the mental side of the game with, uh, you know, him playing in the big leagues for so long. It's just, I had a great support system around me, um, and they just, you know, led me down the right road. How much were the Guardians on you uh, this spring? Uh, did you have conversations, I assume, mostly probably with scouts, but closer to the draft, did you talk to any of the front office guys, and, and what have been kind of your early impressions of, of that organization? Um, you By know, way, I know Kane, my... that's a loaded question. Before you yeah. answer it, the man, the the person who just asked you that question, is a devout Cleveland Guardians fan. So yeah. there's a little bit of a, a loaded nature to the question. But go ahead and answer it. Um, you know, I I let my advisor handle all that, and um, I mean, he he did most of the talking to teams for me. Uh, just kind of let me focus on baseball. But I do know that um, they were pretty high on me, and I, I'm stoked to be a Cleveland Guardian, honestly. Uh, I've been to Progressive Field. Me and my dad took a trip up there a couple of years ago and got to catch a game, and uh, I love the fans and love the love the city of Cleveland, so I'm, I'm excited. Well, we welcome you with open arms, Caden. <laughs> Admit you. it, you wish the Cardinals had picked you. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you, we're happy for you to go to any team, and – I'm sure that uh, you've studied up on the Guardians in the in the day since you were drafted yesterday, and it's an awesome deal. So you grew up For in sure. Oklahoma. You're a baseball guy through and through. Who was your team growing up, Caden? Oh, um, you know, my dad wasn't much of a sports guy, uh, so I, I kind of grew up watching anything that was on ESPN, and around that time the Yankees and Red Sox were really good. So I, I grew up a – Yankees fan, but you know, I at this point I'm I'm happy to be a guardian, honestly. And and to build off that question, uh, you you obviously got to play for Brian Green just one year and Anthony Claggett. You mentioned him, the pitching yeah. coach, again just one year under him. Uh, where do you think uh, the future of Shocker baseball is headed under uh, their leadership? Honestly, I think it's only up from here. I mean, I know you can say. You can talk all you want, but, you know, they, they've they proved that they are going to be here for a long time. And, I mean, I've been around a lot of coaching staffs, and, you know, I love Pelfrey and them, and I think they're great. And 
I think Coach Green and Coach Claggett and all of them, they're the right guys for the job. And I, I honestly see Wichita State either in a regional next year or the year after that. Was there any apprehension for you? I mean, if you – there was a, a new coaching staff, so if you had left, you would have uh, had a new coaching staff. Obviously, you stayed. There was a new coaching staff, and knowing what was at stake for you, were you at all apprehensive about a new voice coming in, and, and you, were you worried about maybe him changing you at all? And obviously that didn't happen. So how did that kind of uh, relationship evolve with Anthony? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's – no matter where I go, uh, there's always going to be voices, you know, in my ear. And, uh, you know, he has the experience and, um, I think he's a great coach. Uh, you know, it's just kind of buying into what's being told to you. Um, and thankfully me and him got along enough to where he realized that, you know, I'm going to be a professional athlete within the next coming year. So he treated me like a pro where it was like, we could have the, you know, man to man conversations of, hey, like, I think you'll succeed by doing this. Let's try this. And I was like, sounds good. Caden favors our guest, chosen in the sixth round yesterday by the Cleveland Guardians. Of course, had a stellar career at Wichita State. Uh, these teams will start to uh, sign these draftees here in the near future. Uh, but with your workload this past year, Caden, what are you expecting? Are you expecting to go uh, maybe to their spring training complex uh, instead of getting an assignment uh, to a, to a team, how does that? What do you What do you expect? Um, you know, I'm not I'm not too sure how it works. Um, I I do know that I'll be ready for whatever's asked of me. Whether I need to stay there and train, and they want to work at the spring training facility, or if I need to go hit the ground running and go make an impact, and you know, single A or double A, I'll do whatever's asked of me. So I think. Uh... You know, Paul Skeens and maybe some others, but really Paul Skeens has brought the, the mustache back into style for pitchers. You got a little one going, I think, a last little year. A little one. It's not, it's not Skeens-like, but it, it maybe could be someday. Is that, wow. uh, is that still kind of the look? Yeah. Anything you can get up there to intimidate somebody, uh, <laughs> you know. It, if you can get in a, a little bit of intimidation going, you've already won. So, I mean, I do the mustache. um you know, as an intimidation thing, everyone else thinks it's a little funny, but I, I like it, so I'm going to stick with it. I love it. Uh, it was a moment last night talking about former Shockers when Alec Bohm uh, performed very well in the home run derby. I imagine that uh, that that caught your interest a little bit because uh, the trickling effect of former Shockers who are making an impact in Major League Baseball has slowed down a little bit. I'm, I know you'd like to be one who makes that impact. Did you watch Alec Bohm? Have you ever met him? Has he ever come back through Shockerland? Um, I haven't met him personally. I know a few of the guys that played with him. Um, my first year there, they were fifth-year seniors, and um, they've you know only said great things about him. And you know, I'd love to run into him one day and kind of catch up and see what funny stories he has for me, but. I mean, I'd love to start the trend of Shockers being, you know, in the big leagues again. I know Brock is uh, tearing it up, and, you know, hopefully I'll see Luke him Ritter too. too. And, yeah, and Luke Ritter. I'm just – I'm hoping we can start something to bring Wichita State back to what it used to be. This is a great program, and, and I, I know we have the right the cusp. for it. Yeah. Well, we look forward to following your progress. Certainly uh, my son, Jeff – uh, will be a big fan. So best of luck, Caden. Thanks for coming on the show. Of course. Thank you for having me. Thanks. Caden Favors, the newest member, close, he'll sign, of the Cleveland Guardians. Of course he will. Wonder what, uh, how the Guardians are going to spread around the money. Cause I, don't, they, I don't wonder. I don't care. Because they took three really high-ceiling high school pitchers yesterday and are going to have to pay them. And Well, you figure it out. Uh, you'll figure it out. That's all I can tell I you. I won't figure it out, but somebody hopefully will. Somebody will get it under control. Oh, I'm very excited about the 16th round pick for the Cardinals. Daniel Ortiz out of Walter State Community College in Tennessee. You never know. You never know. Might be a Hall of Famer someday. I hope so. Uh, you, ne you never know. You're right. We've got a game coming up, hour number two. 
The Bob and Jeff Show, KFH, back in a minute. Radio you can touch. Quiet, numbskulls, I'm broadcasting. Showtime. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? Ready. ready? This is the Bob and Jeff Show, starring Bob Lutz. Let me just turn around here. The Willard Garvey Crime Prevention Citizen Activist Award. I like, I like. Jeff Lutz. What uh, crime are you preventing? Are you out there well, it's at least nabbing 42 bank robbers? Award. In real life, such ridiculous nonsense. 97.5 and 1240 KFH. Stand by for action. All right, we are back. Hour number two, the Bob and Jeff Show, KFH Radio. If you did not hear hour number one and want to, and why wouldn't you? We had Colin Mockery and Caden Favors as our guests. You can do that on the Odyssey app or at kfhradio.com. Max uh, is great about getting those segments up for you to listen to. And you can rewind the whole show at, uh, on the Odyssey app. Sure can. Which I do all the time. I'm a you big do? rewind guy. You listen to our show? Oh, just to get little tips on uh, how I could do a little better. Or, As you should. Uh, you, Of course, my tip for you would be to maybe not use the word obviously three times in a sentence. But, oh, maybe uh, I would. I don't want to come off like I don't already know the foundational elements of my uh, question. I wish you did with Caden Favors there, but I'm the only one that picks up on that. Uh, most likely, although ma- ma- others may. Just wanted them to know that I obviously knew no, what I'm you're talking a, you're about. You're more of a student of the language than to do that, and uh, you should be embarrassed by it. Nah, I'm not. I'm okay. I'd be a, I'd what be a I- little bit embarrassed. I often go back on Facebook now after I put up a post. And I see these things that I can't believe I didn't correct, or you know what I'm saying. You can always edit. I do. Good. I edit it, but I'm just surprised that some of these things get through now. Well, typos are a real thing. They happen a lot. They've happened throughout my entire life. Same. I wonder who made more. You know what my worst inaccuracy writing trait is? I never know what day it is. So I'll just start writing a story Thursday, blah blah blah, and it's and it's Monday. Mine through uh, all these years, and this is this will sound ridiculous, because if I really think about it, I know effect and effect are still just a complete mystery to me, uh, unless I really slow down, and I got to go through it in my brain. Effect is a verb. I understand that, Effect Jeff. Effect is a noun. I understand but that. But that's all you got to think of. And I understand that. All right, good. But that's been, it's caused me tremendous consternation in my lifetime as a writer. Because those are two words that have completely different meanings. But sort of. sound the same. Look the same, pretty much. It's just it's driven me crazy. They sort of have completely different meaning. Ah, they do. I mean, they, they do. If you really, you again, you got to really an effect. You got to really think about it. Mm, I guess. I mean, that's yeah. Everyone has their. What's well, sure. I just Mr. told you. Perfect. Just told you what, what day it was. is. I mean, a a a a. a Anybody knows. I know what day it is in my head, obviously, but when I when the words come out, it doesn't really matter. I'll say Friday when I mean Sunday, Tuesday when I mean Thursday. It's just it's just I start writing, and the day it becomes inconsequential. Well, the day's never inconsequential in my brain. The day is as consequential as anything. Yeah, I've gotten better. So I would say when you come to the day, slow down. Sure, couldn't hurt. You like my new Eagles shirt, by the way? Not really. It's pretty cool. Not really. Don't care for it. Huh. <laughs> well, what do you want me to say? I just thought you'd enjoy it. I, I didn't like even it. know it was an Eagles shirt. I like it. It, said it. it says Eagles on it. A 41-year-old man. Eh, I guess it's fine. I guess it's fine. I'm never going to be a cool dresser, okay? I just wear what's comfortable. I try to represent the things that I like, and that's it. Yeah, but I'm saying uh, you don't see me in a Cardinals shirt. Why not? What's the problem? I don't know. I'm I'm too old for that. You stuff. wear a League 42 shirt every well, day. Well, sure, I represent League 42. There you go. I'm involved with. League I represent 42. the Eagles. You don't. I have am anything involved. to do with the Eagles. I am involved with as the Eagles. As much as in your own mind you probably think you actually do, 
I wish Judah was here right now. Because he and I see you for what you are when it comes to this situation. Like what? You're a fanboy. Sure. You're a tag along. That's you're fine. A, you're a, you know what? What? You know. No, I don't. You know what I mean. No, I don't. You know what I'm getting at. I don't. And Duda and I aren't necessarily like that. That's okay. Music from the summer of 1974. Well, that's a good song. Uh, all right, we apologize for the disconnect, but uh, we're back. Hopefully and it never happens again. Well, we'll see. We we do the best we can. We're just two guys from Derby trying to make I'm it happen. I'm not from Derby, actually. Uh, you were, your roots are in Derby. Not really. Maybe. Uh, you you kind of had some, something to do with Derby. Uh, Why not? And I spent my uh, childhood there. Absolutely. All right, Max. It is time to play the game. Time to play the game. Time to play the game. <laughs> All right, Jeff has it. I'll play it. I wish we'll we had another baseball person here because this would be a fun game to play with two people. But well, I'll, uh, you bring in another baseball person. We're gonna. You know what I'll do? What? I'll send them on their way. We're gonna do a, an all-star themed game. We're gonna go from one through twenty, and you have to name a person who has made at least that many all-star games. So, if if we get to one and you name a guy with seventeen, that counts, and you get seventeen points. But once we get to seventeen, and who? I don't, there's not there's not gonna be that guy left. Does that make sense? Oh, I guess. So you can't reuse anybody. All right, go. All right. Who name someone who's made at least one All Star team? Ryan Helsley. Has he? Well, he's on this year's team. Yeah, he's, he's two, not playing. He's but a he two, still made the he's team. He's a two time All Star, right. so you get two points for that round. Right. Next, two time All Star or I'll more. I'll stick with Cardinals. I'll dominate this with with mostly Cardinals. Fine. Uh, this will be easy. Good. All right. Well, go. Name somebody who's made Jim a, Edmonds. At least two All-Star games. Jim Edmonds is a four-time All-Star. So you're up to six points now. Three-time All-Star or more. Three-time All-Star. Yeah, or more. Or more. Can be, it just has to be at Larry least Larry Walker. Larry Walker, Hall of Famer. He was... A, one, two, three, four, five time All Star. You have 11 points. Now you need a four time All Star or more. Really? Now we're getting serious. A little bit. Um, four time All Star or more. Uh, yes. Cardinals. Doesn't have to be a Cardinal. I'm kind of sticking to that theme. Yadier Molina. Larry Walker was barely a Cardinal. Yadier Molina. Uh, an All Star. You wouldn't. Be you won't believe how many times he was an All Star. Ten. So you have twenty-one points. Now we go to the five-time All Stars or more. Mark McGuire. Mark McGuire. He. I probably should just look him up. But now, now I have a list. Mark McGuire is a twelve-time All Star. You're at thirty-three points. How am I doing? Doing okay. Damn, I'm doing damn well. That's the answer to that question. Next. Six-time All-Star. Six-time All-Star. Yes. Going to start getting a little tougher here. Might. I uh, ruined a couple of longer mo uh, All-Stars. Well, they don't I need may to have to go non-Cardinals at some point. You sure might. Uh, Lou Brock. Lou Brock was a... Six-time All-Star. You barely, Thank barely you. got that. Thank you. Seven-time All-Star or more. I better uh, better go with my guy. Already? Well, don't give away the hint. I don't know how many he's got. I have not Bob looked. Bob Gibson. I have not looked at Bob Gibson. Bob Gibson made eight All-Star teams. Yeah, I knew it was right in that. 
category. It was time. Now you need an eight-time All-Star or more. An eight-time All-Star. I could go back to the time where they played two All-Star games, which I will do at some point. Well, this is most seasons on an All-Star roster. Okay. This is not All-Star game appearances. Really? Correct. Really? That's how you're doing. Yeah, that's that's what, how you're going to do it. That's what Baseball Reference is giving. That's how me. you're going to play. But this. there are guys up to twenty, twenty over and twenty. You're so. going to play it that way, huh? I am. Frank Robinson. Frank Robinson for an eight-time All Star. I mean, that's a pretty good guess. He was a twelve-time All Star. So you're at fifty-nine. Nine-time All Star Nine or more. All-Star. Nine time. Yes. All Star. Yes. Barry Bonds. Barry Bonds. You should, I mean, you should probably go ahead and sweep this game. Barry Bonds, a 14-time All-Star. Uh, so you got your nine, but your 14 might struggle later. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. You get you, Here's what you do. You try to get through the round. Exactly. That's how you play this. Wouldn't that have been a what fun? What am I up to? Wouldn't that have been a fun two-person game? I'd have killed them. Maybe I could have played it. What are we up to? Ten. You need a ten-time All-Star? ten-time All-Star. Yes. A ten-time All-Star. Yes. At least. Oh, I'm nervous as heck about this. I don't know that Roberto you Roberto Clemente. Oof. I mean, I assume so. Roberto Clemente was a 12-time All-Star. <laughs> God, I'm good. I am so good at this. <laughs> Are you? You need it now. It's just, it's ridiculous. Now you need an 11 time All Star. 11 time All Star. Yes, or more. Uh, 11 time All Star. Well, I've let a lot of good players go by the wayside. I'm not sure about them anymore. I got to go with the the best of the best. 11 time All Star. Yes. Roger Clemens. Uh oh. Roger Clemens. 11-time All-Star. How good am I? How? I mean, on, for a on minute. the nose, 11-time All-Star. For a minute. I don't feel like I need to talk to the audience. That's luck to me. Really? If I'm, if I'm trying to name an 11-time All-Star, I better name a 15-time All-Star. Uh, what are we up to, 12? 12-time All-Star in the major leagues. 12-time All-Star. The big unit, Randy Johnson. Randy that's an X for this round. What? That is an X. You got to be kidding me! For round twelve. How many times? Ten. You're kidding. You're. Uh, that's a joke. I don't know what to tell you. Next, you need a thirteen-time All Star. Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter, Hall of Famer, maybe even a superstar at one point in his career, was a fourteen-time All Star. <laughs> You're up to 110 points. Now you need, what are we on? A 14-time All-Star. Stan Musial. Stan Musial, obviously, 20-time All-Star. Limits your picks for 20-time All-Star. Uh, but, sure it does. But now you need a 15, 16-time All-Star. Wait. 15. Yes, 15. 15 time All Star. Yeah, that's, that's, that's correct. Well, this, get, this is getting tougher and tougher. Cal Ripken. Cal Ripken, I assume you mean junior. Made, I saw this earlier, but let me make sure. 19 All Star games. You're at 100. And 49 points. Oh, gosh, this guy. Did he make enough? And you need a 16-time All-Star. This guy pitched forever. Nolan Ryan had to make 16 All-Star. I would personally doubt it. But he made eight. Dang it. (laughs) That's two strikes. Three strikes, you're out. Uh, Willie Mays. 17-time All-Star. Was it Willie Mays? Of course it was. It was. He was a 20-time All-Star. 18-time 
time. How many time? How many eighteen time All Stars are there? There are six that I haven't and guessed. And you've named two. Really? Yes. Well, you, I, you've the named obvious one. You've would, named three. Sorry. So there. Are th- I don't know when. When did the All Star Game start? These are all guys, basically. In the second half of the 20th century. Yeah. So you don't need to go way back. Mickey Mantle. Mickey Mantle. Sorry. No. He only made it 16 times. Uh, that's my 16-time guess. <laughs> well, you missed 16 also. You can try 19 and 20, but you struck Hank out. Hank Aaron. You struck out at 169 points. Hank Aaron. Hank Aaron, a 21-time All-Star. Can you name... You've named all the other 20-time All-Stars. I have? Yes. What about Ted Williams, who missed significant time? Dang it. F- here's 15 or more. Yogi Berra. Well, wait a minute. What, what about Johnny Bench? I, I was going. I can't. Uh, Johnny Bench. Where is Johnny Bench? 14. That would have been a good guess. It would have. You used too many high numbers early. Well, not really. Eh, you didn't. You I were, did well. You ran out of 20s. Yeah, but anybody's going to run out of 20s because you, there haven't been that many. You finished with 169 points. That's. I don't care about the point. You should. Is that good? Nobody knows. The game's never been played before. I think it's good. Although, if you're de- just naming, if you're starting low, points don't matter. If you're trying to get a one-time all-star. Yeah, but what if you name a seven-time all-star? At one. You, get seven you shouldn't points. get points for that. Yeah, you do. Because no, you that, that makes the game harder down the line. If you name a seven-time All-Star, nah, you've, no, eliminated, I you've eliminated a seven-time All-Star. I don't All-Star make things hard down the line. When you need to I, name a seven-time I don't. All-Star. I make things easier down the line. That's my. That's what I do. You, you reserve uh, the, the bigger numbers for later. You could, yeah. That's a strategy. And there are other strategies. As... The game evolves, and it's been played more than one time. I'm sure people will develop their own strategies. What about, uh, I don't know about this one. What about Joe DiMaggio? Joey D. He made a lot of Joes, 13 All-Star games. 13. I'm getting them all. I'm getting most of the guys that are in double digits. Uh, There are nine Joes. Who have made at least five all-star teams. How many can you name? Joe Medwick. Ten. Joe. Not counting Joey Votto. Uh, Just Joe, straight Joe. Not Joe Pepitone. Uh, although he made an all-star team or two. Joe. Shoeless Joe Jackson. Joe Jackson. Man, is he named Shoeless Joe Jackson on here? Uh, no, I think he predated the All-Star yeah. game. Give me a hint. Right in our backyard. In our backyard? Yeah, he played right in our backyard. Collegiately. Joe Carter. Yeah. Uh, long-time manager. Joe Torrey. Long-time closer. Joe, God, what was that the... guy's name? Joe Nuxall? No. He p- pitched, uh, I think he might have been a Kansas star, but he's most known for his time with the Twins, maybe a little bit with the Giants. Joe, what's the last name? Joe Nathan. Oh, yeah, Joe Nathan. You have uh, a player turned broadcaster. Joe Morgan, obviously. You have, a, And he played in a bunch. You have a I catcher. should have picked him. How many for Joe Morgan? Joe Morgan had uh, 10. They had a catcher? Yeah. The Hall, Joe. Of, Hall of Famer this year. Oh, Joe Maurer. Yeah, the other two were Joe Gordon with nine and Joe Cronin with seven. Well, that's a long time ago. It is. Did you know there have been four lineups for All-Star games, not including the pitchers, that have been repeated? One no. through eight, the same. No. Four times. How many for Kurt Flood? How many All-Star games? I almost said Kurt Flood for one of the lower numbers. 
I would guess three. Kurt Flood made three All Star teams. Golly, sixty four. I mean, if 66, you're just tuning in and you're and you're driving through, or you're 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 trying to find something on the radio that that uh, involves uh, somebody with some intelligence. Uh, how could you not be drawn to that? It's tough. Ask me another one. I'll tell you how many All Star games. I'll hit it on the nose, and if I if I miss, uh, I'll excuse anybody from ever listening to this show again. Edgar Renteria. Edgar Renteria, huh? Yeah, he was a uh, he was an All Star, uh, probably a four time All Star. Five. Ah, how many with the Cardinals? Two. Yes. O three and O four. That 04 Cardinals team Actually, was 2000 also. Uh, that that 04 Cardinal team was littered with all stars. Had a bunch. Well, I mean, come on. Oh, how many for Scott Rowland? Should have said him. I would guess eight. How many for Nolan Arenado? Should or Paul Goldschmidt? What what what, am I, what was I thinking? Seven for Rowland. Arenado. Nolan Arenado has eight. And Goldie. Goldschmidt. Probably has eight to ten. Seven. Seven. Well, I wish they'd play like an all-star right, right about now. The Cardinals don't have an all-star with Ryan Helsley uh, not pitching tonight. And they're a team above 500. What, what does that say? I don't know. It says uh, most of their best performances have come on a little later, kind of after the voting. They've gotten hot. More recently, they're thirty and seventeen after their f- bad start. Yeah, maybe they'll uh, continue. I don't know. I, I don't I hold. You'd out. expect uh, Brendan Donovan, right? He Brendan Donovan's a good player. He, he's. I get him and the other guy mixed up. Who's the other guy? The other just kind of random. Tommy Edmond? No. Well, I don't know who you're talking about. The guy who played second base, and you know who I'm talking about. Nolan Gorman? No. Well, who are you? There's no way to know who you're talking about. Oh. Lars Newtbar? No. Uh, Alec you Burleson. Again. You get him and Burleson mixed up? Yeah. Alec Burleson never played second base? Well, whatever he played. He's an outfielder. He's the good one. They're both good. Who is the other guy besides Burleson? See, I don't even know. I can't think Brendan of, Donovan. Yeah, Brendan Donovan, Alec Burleson. They're the same guy. No, they're not. They both have long hair. They they look they exactly both hit left alike. Uh, they're they both look good exactly players. alike. They're both good players. Eh, Brendan Donovan's fine. No, he's a good player. Because you can play him anywhere and uh, he'll hit. Yeah, I advised my friend David Michael Hahn to pick up Alec Burleson for his and, and Bur- team. I wasn't talking about Burleson. I am. Uh, I Alec don't know Burleson the difference. Is a is a very good hitter. In fact, he's been one of the best in the National League for two months. Not an All Star though. I bet he is next year if he. We'll see how he does. Gets the Josh Naylor He'll be the treatment. The first baseman next year for the Cardinals. Yeah. Who will not bring back Paul Goldschmidt? Why would they? I, it that would be an Ill, me ill-advised move. Pains me to say it. He's going to be a guy who's trying to hang on a little bit next year. He won't be Rockies, Pirates level bad, but he'll go to someone like the Reds or Guardians. No, we're better than him. Guardians. I could see him Maybe in like Cleveland. like the Angels. I bet he goes to the Angels. No, I could see him in Cleveland. We don't need him. We are overstocked. You need, a, you, you need somebody who can walk and chew gum in that lineup. We are overstocked with position player talent. Uh, when we get uh, when we get knocked off the air, it creates a big timing issue with me. I'm one who uh, goes very strictly by time. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no, you could take a break whenever you no, want. I don't. I don't do that. I run a show that is based on good timing. Max Power appreciates. Well, that. a. a Insanely long segment isn't necessarily Max, good timing. The thing. Max Power appreciates it. He's told me. No, he hasn't. No, he does appreciate it. I know how producers think. No, you don't. They want they want hosts. No one to, knows how Max thinks. They want hosts to pay attention to the time. 
Whoa. and don't cut it short, and certainly don't. Well, make you already it long. cut it short. You cut it short in the first segment. Cut and, a little and bit they short. Don't like, they don't like hosts who go long. So on this show, you'll never hear the the music start up, indicating, "Hey, idiots, it's time to take a break." That doesn't happen here. It doesn't. Do you want me to get Max on to tell you? I really don't. No. What if I do? And I'll probably go upstairs. Well, that's rude. Well, it's kind of your thing. Kind of your your correspondence with Max. I don't need to be involved. I like talking to Max. Talk to him then. Unless I don't. It's one of those things. You gonna watch the All Star Game tonight? I, I assume. Am. My wife won't let me not watch. Is it only on Fox? Am I gonna be able to watch it? Only, what do you mean? Is it only on Fox? Like, no, it's on uh, the Discovery like Channel. Will it be they're, on the MLB. They're gonna, uh, they're gonna put it on tonight. Like will and, it be uh, on the MLB I app? Think Animal Planet is carrying. No, is the MLB what a dumb? Is the MLB of app? Of course not. What's I think, wrong with? I think it will. Jeff. What's wrong with you? You don't think the MLB app will show the All Star game? Of course game? not. I believe it will. I'll bet you any amount of money. Two dollars. Any amount of money. Fox pays for this. Right. They're going to let the MLB app run it. Are you crazy? It would still be the Fox broadcast. Are, are you are you nuts? God. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. It would to still me. be the Fox broadcast. You know, they People put want Fox wants their the TVs tuned to Fox. You know they put the World Series on the MLB app sometimes. No, they don't. Yes, they do. They never have. That's how I watched Game 7 no, in 2016. Not. You were watching the Fox app. No, I was watching the MLB app. You were not. I was. Nope. Those things I don't have don't the happen. Fox app. And yes, they do. Those things do not happen. I bet I can. I'll could. reiterate it. I'll, I'll believe it till the cows come home. That's ridiculous. How to watch the MLB All Star Game tonight? Uh, Fox, Sling TV, Fox. I have that. Well, you have Fox? I don't know. You can watch it for free. You're the free only guy I know who doesn't know what he has. You can watch it for free with Fubo. That's well, a- I can watch it free with. I doubt Fox. it. <laughs> I mean, you people who won't pay a dime. Uh, yeah, you I deserve, pay for Sling TV, Netflix, you, Hulu. You deserve everything bad that could happen to you in the world of television viewing. The game will st- stream on Sling TV. Here's what I do. So there you go. Done. Here's what I do. Don't care anymore. I pay. As do I. I want Fox. I pay for it. You know how? I never have to worry about it. It's in beautiful high definition on my 70-inch television. I, 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 uh, yeah, and you pay an exorbitant amount of money lighting. for cable. I turn What's on the your m- cable bill every year. I turn on the mood lighting. What's your cable bill every month? I, uh, cable I make bill. sure the sound is cable bill. I don't care. Money is it, it really largely irrelevant. Then give me some. Never. Then why and how is it irrelevant? Because it's all going to other things. That sounds relevant to me. And I'll, I'll know what it is when I get to that time. I haven't even made it. I want money now. No, I'm not giving it to you. I, I'll I, never give I it. I want it. I'll never give it's it to you. It's irrelevant. Give it to me. No, you'll never get it. I'm going to reach in your... Because I am not leaving my money to you. <laughs> Why? I'm just not. What a horrible thing to say to your son. It's not what I do. Why? It's going... What do you think you're proving? You'll be dead. Yeah. And, and What does that prove? In the great beyond, someone will tap me on the shoulder and say... Were you a jerk in your final act? And you'll I'm say glad yes. You didn't leave that sob any money. If they talk like that in the great beyond, which uh, maybe they do, maybe they don't. Uh, sad to hear about the passing of Henry Carr, former Wichita State basketball player, brother of Antoine and James and Tracy and Terry and that whole family of Carr brothers who uh, contributed so mightily to high school and college basketball, and, of course, in Antoine's case, the NBA. Uh, Henry Carr uh, news today that he has passed away. So our condolences to everyone in that family. Uh, Boy, I go back a long way with the Cars, and uh, James and Antoine were members of that 1977 Heights team that was, in my opinion, the greatest high school team ever in the state of Kansas. 
And I haven't seen a team that comes too close to them yet. Maybe not. I don't know. Henry came a little later. Had a good uh, run at Wichita State in the uh, Eddie Fogler era. Leading scorer on the 1987 team that made the NCAA tournament. Leading rebounder as well. Those were some really balanced teams that Eddie Fogler had. Had a lot of good players. Yeah, he led the team at 11 points. Had the Prelos, Gus Santos. Uh, give me some others. Sasha. Sasha Radunovic. Uh, John Cooper at the end. Uh, Paul Gafrovich. What do you think of my uh, Shocker uniform numbers? I post? don't think I uh, paid. I don't think I really delved into it. It's pretty interesting stuff. Really? Yeah. I just went back to 1990 because I'm not the historian. I, I probably would have made a mistake if I had chosen guys from longer ago. But I thought I did a good job. Well, you should have chosen them from longer well, ago. Well, maybe I will. The 90s were a, an abysmal period. of. Yeah, I, there weren't that many early 90s guys. I think Kamayu Alexander snuck onto a team, and that's about it. Well, I mean. He was uh, on the 31 team with Ron Baker. Well, a 31 team, a good team, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Let me see if I can find it. But I don't think they were that good. You, uh, they had Ron uh, Baker, though. Who was on your 42 team? You know what? I think I have bad news for you. Uh-oh. What? I don't think there were enough 42s to go around. You're kidding. Not what since, about Dave uh, the Rave? Yeah, he'll, because it's retired. There have been none since the 90s. He'll beat all of you. He might. He'll beat all of your teams single-handedly. I doubt you could make a good 42 team. You just have Dave. But here's 33. Connor Frankamp, Ryan Hurst, Jason Perez, Rob Campman, and Montas Griskanis. Not bad. By the way, Connor Frankamp will be a guest on this show tomorrow. At uh, 225, of course, playing again with the Aftershocks and the the basketball tournament. Connor's got to be uh, approaching 30, doesn't he? I guess he probably would. Yeah, he might be 30. That's hard to fathom. Yeah, because he was playing at North in the early 2010s. He's 29. He'll be, he's 29 today, in fact. Well, happy birthday, Connor. Uh, one of the most enjoyable basketball players to watch. That I've come across in our fair town. No question about it. My wife and I went to every high school game there when he was when he was really kicking it. Pretty much a can't miss player in the history of Wichita high school sports. Well, he just lo he was fun to watch. Those players don't come along that often that are just fun to watch. Yeah, he he's he changed the game. That's a good in category. the city league. Not necessarily the best players, but the most fun-to-watch players in City League history. Uh, certainly, Frank Camp, Ross, Adonis and Valentine Gantt. would be in my top three. Adonis Gant would be in my top three. What? What did he play? Southeast. I loved those Southeast What about teams. Bubba Schaaf? Jordan Cyphers. Yeah, Bubba. I don't really remember seeing him play. I just, you love Bubba. I, re I just remember that I loved him. You absolutely love Bubba Shea. Of course I did. Still do. He's been on our show. Well, good. For, good. I, I, listen, I uh, love City League basketball and the history and nostalgia of it. We could talk about it all day. It's one of Brent Kemnitz's favorite topics. Like the City League hoops? Sure Pretty he does. Much from the same era as you, maybe a little after. What do you mean a little after? Isn't he a couple years younger than you? A few years younger? A couple years younger. Is he 65? Of course he is. He is? He's 67. No. It's crazy. That can't be right. Time passes, man. It does. Now I feel like i got to look up his age. Well, he's born in October. Well, that, doesn't, um, that doesn't tell I'm you pretty age. sure he's 67. Brent, if I've added a year to you, I apologize. I think I'm a year and a half thereabouts older. Brent Kimnitz is 67 years old. There you go. 
What does it give my age? Do I have a page? What are you talking is about? Is that a Wikipedia page you're looking no. at? What is it? It's uh, people's information. Well, how do you have that? I just have it. Robert Lutz, Wichita, Kansas, 69 years it, old. Where does it say that? Show me that. I'm going to destroy your phone. Let me see it. No, I'm, I'm not no, giving no, it to you. No, no, let me see the phone. I'm holding it up to you. No, I want to see it. I'm not giving you my phone. And it gives uh, uh, my house value? Your address? What are you looking at? Your phone what number? What are you, the CIA files? There's your phone number right there. Tell me what you're looking at. Never. Seriously. <laughs> Why would what I... else does it say about me? It has your old work number. It has... Your phone number on Bella Vista. It has phone number on this house. I don't remember where that one was from. That number. I don't think I ever had a phone number at this house, did yeah, I? Yeah, you did. What was it? 0584. Oh, yeah. What was the uh, 944 number? Where did that come from? And what's the rest of it? I'm not going to just say somebody's phone Why? number. 4473. Ah, somebody called it once. I don't recall that number. Is that really how much you paid for your house? Heck if I can remember. Cheapskate. Cheapskate? Yeah, I paid twice that. Did you really? I think so. For that? I mean, great house. Well, it's out. You had to build it. You had to. I mean, it's out in the middle. It's a high property value. Everything's beautiful. Well, I mean, uh, you know, I got a good deal on this house. My stuff isn't on this site. Not my current phone number. They don't. They don't know what my number is. Good. They don't need to know. Yeah. And whatever site that is, shame on them. But there I am. What site is it? I'm not gonna tell you that. Just tell me. Fastpeoplesearch.com. Wow. Now everybody in the world will be searching. If they want, I guess. I don't care enough to search. It's weird. The people. That are listed as being related to me. All right, Connor Frank Camp tomorrow. Mike Furches will talk pop culture with our friend Mike Furches as well. Have a good night, everyone. We'll see you soon.